When creating your own presentations, videos, social content, whatever it might be, compelling imagery can be so important to telling your story. Using Photoshop tips and techniques, in this video you'll explore a few key photo editing techniques like replacing a background, cropping, combining a few images, and more. So let's jump in. The first technique we'll explore is replacing a background in your photo. Now this can be easier if your subject is against a plain or solid color background when you take the photo. So think about that. In this case, this image is for someone's social channel. She was photographed against a solid color background to make it easier to replace. Now with your image open, you can select people or objects pretty easily. Choose Select, Subject. Photoshop actually uses machine learning and artificial intelligence to determine what to select, the person in this case. You can also use this tool over here in the toolbar called the Object Selection Tool to drag across your subject, like this woman, to select it. It's just another way to do it. With the subject selected, you may notice it did a pretty good job, but you might need to fix the selection, like her earrings. Now, to do that, you can enter the Select and Mask workspace to refine it. So choose Select, Select and Mask. In this workspace, you can refine your selection using a few tools. First, drag the slider here to show more or less of the area to be masked or hidden. That means the area outside of the selection. Using the Quick Selection tool over here in the toolbar, you can add to or remove from the selection. So I'll zoom in a little bit using Pinch Zoom on my laptop here. The earrings need to be selected. So with this tool selected, you can make the brush bigger if you need by changing the size up here. Then you can drag across the area that you want to add to the selection. There. Now the blue in the background needs to be removed from the selection. So you can press Alt or Option and drag to remove those areas. Now the selection looks pretty good but you can get a better idea of how it looks by choosing something like black and white from preview over here. Not bad. And then you can go back to onion skin or something else. Now there's a bit of blue showing through the hair here. So using the tool over here called Refine Edge Brush, you can quickly refine the selection further. The idea is to brush over soft areas like hair or fur to add fine details to the selection. There. Now there are so many features in this workspace to help you make better selections, but for this image there's only one more step we need. To ensure that the edges don't have a blue reflection from the background, scroll down in the panel over here and click the arrow here to open the output settings so you can see decontaminate colors. Turn this option on and drag the slider to around 60% or so to see the difference. You can adjust it as you see fit. It's replacing the color fringes around the edges with color of fully selected pixels nearby. That looks pretty good. Now you can choose to output in a number of formats. In this case, choose new layer with layer mask. That way it'll mask or hide the content outside of the selection. And it'll create a mask that you can see out there in the layers panel. Click OK. And you can see that the image is now separated from the background by a mask. The mask is just hiding the content that was in the background. You can see it over here in the Layers panel. You can now leave the image cut out for transparency in an image, or maybe even add another image behind, or even add a color background. Let's add a solid color or even a gradient background out here. To add a solid color, click the Fill Layer icon and choose either Solid Color or Gradient Background. I'll try Solid Color. You can then pick a color, you can even use the eyedropper here if you move your pointer out and sample from the image. Granted, it's a little tough right now because this new layer with color is on top of the image. So click OK. And you can always drag the color layer below the image layer in the Layers panel like this. OK, now let's take a look at some techniques for getting your images ready for use in your projects. We'll do things like combine a couple of images, cut one of them out, remove content from one of the images like you see here, and maybe add a little color adjustment. So I've got an image open here and I wanna liven it up for a presentation I have. I wanna crop it or cut it. I wanna remove something from an image. I'm gonna combine another image with it and maybe adjust the color a bit. So let's jump in. It's easy to combine images in Photoshop. 
With an image open, you can add as many as you need. Choose File, Place Embedded. Find the image or images you want and you can open them. Now when they're in place, you can adjust the size and the position, but don't make it too much bigger or it may become pixelated and look bad. When you think it looks good, press Return or Enter and you can now work on them. To arrange the images, so in this case the chalkboard is behind, unlock your background layer here by clicking the lock, that way you can move it and do things to it, and drag this image layer under. Okay, now to mask behind the woman here. I showed you how to do that previously in the video, so it'll be good practice for you. I'll just run through it. I'll select her. I'll go into Select and Mask Mode. You can then add or subtract from the selection, maybe like the backpack here if it didn't grab it. I might decontaminate the colors over here. And make sure that I'm outputting to a layer with a mask. I'll click OK. There. Now you can position your layers with the Move tool by dragging them where you want them. Now we need to crop or cut the image to the right size, and we can use the Crop tool to do that. So select the Crop tool, and before cropping, you can actually set a size up here. So if you're doing this for a social media site, you can get the dimensions, the width and height, and type them in up here. Choose Width by Height by Resolution first. Then in these first two fields, you can type your width and height in, and also type the resolution here. Usually it's going to be 72 ppi for web. Press return, you have to do that a few times, and there it is, the correct size. Now as a side note, I usually save a copy of the file that's the original size, and I also work with smart objects, but that's for another time. Okay, now to remove the content from a photo like this here. Select this layer so we tell Photoshop what we want to affect. And we're going to start by making a selection of it. So with the Object Selection tool selected, drag across this part. Now in order for this to work, the layer that you're working on needs to be a background layer. So to do that, choose Layer, New, Background from Layer. Now we'll let Photoshop fill it in with the surrounding area using Content Aware Fill. So choose Edit, Content Aware Fill. In here, Photoshop shows you what it's attempting to do over here. Here's what I usually do. See the dark part here, this shadow? We don't want that. So we can add it to the selection. The selection you see here is what you don't want. So select the lasso tool in the toolbar and drag around the area you might want to replace. I usually make it a bit outside of this area as well. There. Now the green color over here is what Photoshop can copy or sample from. We only wanted sampling from the chalkboard and the table. So we can tell it not to sample from the book on the table, for instance. So select the Sampling Brush tool, and I'll paint in the areas that I don't want it to copy from, since it's only copying from the one layer. That looks pretty good. Click OK, and you've got your image. One last thing we can do here is to add a color adjustment if you want to try and tie the images together. Now you can use things like levels, brightness, contrast, curves, things like that to actually adjust the color of the images. But you can also apply a look to your images using Color Lookup in the Adjustments panel. Try choosing one of these looks to change your image. Well, I like that one. Now if you feel like it's too much, you can also go to the Layer in the Layers panel and change the opacity of that look to remove some. Now to finish up, I just added a little bit of text, and I've got myself something I can export and use in my other projects. Creating compelling imagery can be done no matter what grade or experience level. As students progress through their learn journey, they can master their image editing skills with Adobe Photoshop, starting with some of these techniques. For K-12 projects that make distance learning engaging, visit the edX.adobe.com website.